Well, you guys liked the last video, the legendary review, and enough people said they wanted to see the epic one, so we're gonna do the epic one today. So check this out, we just hit 18,000 subs. Thank you guys, we are still climbing at 20,000. We have a surprise video coming out. It's been in the shop for a while. It's a long-term project. It's probably gonna take me another two weeks to complete, but subscribe because at 20K, big surprise. Okay, now everyone knows what time it is. It is time to go through the epics. Now, how we're gonna do this is we're gonna go through every single faction, and I'm going to briefly mention the epics. Now, if it's an epic that doesn't really have anything going for it, it's just a chicken, I'm just gonna say chicken, but if it's an epic that has something going for it, uh, then I'll just briefly mention that thing. Now, I'll go a little bit more into detail than I did in the legendary one, because I just kind of briefed through, and a few people were like, eh, a couple more minutes would have been longer, so. Okay, so here we go, guys. Starting with the Banner Lords, starting with Horden, he was shown in the $50 pack, it's like a test pack, and uh, I don't uh, particularly think he's too amazing unless you're early game in your account. Uh, Oathbound here, he's only good really uh, as, as like a PvP, early game PvP guy. Sinesho has, uh, what is it? I think it's the third move here, yeah has a counterattack and provoke, which is kind of cool, might help you early, uh, but I'm not really a huge fan. He's also kind of got this um, Perfect Veil thing here, which, which uh, uh, again, Perfect Veil really hasn't had a use quite yet that I've seen. Knight Errant's just kind of whatever, it's a chicken. Rowan I actually like, but she's not good enough um, quite yet to really get a massive place in the meta, mostly just her third move here with the poisons is why people use her. Uh, Zura's not really used for anything, it's a chicken. Warcaster, I actually have three of fully booked because of this move, I was trying to like cheese the block damage, but he's only really used for the block damage. But it's kind of interesting because he can steal two buffs on basic attacks, so uh, he's kind of okay in magic keep as well. Okay, Crosswoman, uh, we're getting into the rares here, so that's gonna cover the Banner Lords. Let's go into High Elves here. Okay, uh, starting with Royal Guard. Royal Guard is a very good um, dungeon character. You can use him early game in the clan boss as well. He's gonna help you clear waves as well as clear like spider and things like that. He's good in the dungeons. Tayro is just a top epic all the way around. One of the best uh, attack down on basic attack characters as well as has an AOE uh, decreased defense, which is very useful. And then Termir removal on the third move just makes him all around one of the top epics in the game. Thanasso is like a decent healer uh, and has like defense up. Uh, Lutheria here is just kind of like an okay damage dealer early on. Virgus doesn't really have as much use uh, even after the buffs. Marksman uh, can be okay early on for like a clan boss poisoner. Jingle Hunter is uh, was originally used in the Santa Claus fusion as well as a semi-decent early game arena leader. Battle Sage, I am not really that impressed with, neither am I impressed with Exemplar. Then we get to the rares there, okay? So moving on to the next faction here, we have Sacred Order. Now, Sacred Order, um, I don't think they have as many good epics as I was thinking. Both Canis and Adriel are just kind of okay. I've heard uh, one of my buddies who's extremely in game has been telling me he likes Hope a lot, but I have yet to really get the details of where he's been using them. Um, then we have Talia and Frostbringer. Now, Frostbringer is like an okay kind of uh, AoE defense down person. Uh, it's, it attacks at random, though, is the problem. And as I look at her, I'm realizing she actually has increased speed and attack. I forgot on her. So she might be okay, but she doesn't have term either fill, which normally when you want increased speed, you want term or fill. So just like my initial impressions on her, not so hot, all right? Uh, Talia kind of looks like me. And then we have Juliana here. And also Talia is okay as like a campaign farmer early on. You can use her with her counterattack and everything. Uh, Juliana is uh, a very good early to mid game clan boss damage dealer with the poisons as well as the HP burn. Although the uh, the basic attack can screw up your turn either order. And then Aeolthar is kind of same deal, uh, a, a good damage dealer and can go into the end game with his damage dealing if you have this move max there as well. And now we're on to Relic Keeper. He's a campaign farmer. Missionaries in the fusion is bad. Romero is like kind of okay if you get impaired. Lady Otessa is, uh, aka Sanction Purifier, is a character used in the current fusion. Bushy, not very good. Uh, Phoenix, I've heard, can be kind of okay with like a bomb squad. Other than that, I haven't heard too much. Mistress of Hymns, I'm not, um, I'm not that mad about her. I think she's like kind of okay. I kind of like the continuous heal and being able to revive people with a veil is interesting. Cardno, I don't really know that much about. Uh, she has a chance of placing poisons. What is this, 15% on basic? Mm, it's not that good. 60% decreased defense revives all allies. Okay. 
and boost their turn meter to the max. That's kind of interesting. That might actually be useful. There's something there, I think. Uh, Light Sworn's quite good. Has a revive on death with increased defense, uh, has an attack down, decreases turn meter. He's, he's got a lot. Um, Atho, now we're getting to the rares, and everyone knows Atho's good. Okay. Going into Barbarians here. And the Barbarians don't have too many good ones. Ain is kind of mad. Jotun's mad. Sakara's mad. Otter's mad. Leek is mad. Tashiva's mad. Kalia is like kind of okay early on um, for like clan boss damage if you need some kind of HP burn. This, sh this chick's used in the fusion. Wood Pain is not good. High Katoon is actually pretty good. It can be used as a decent leader as well. Um, this new character I think is kind of interesting, but I'm not. I'm not thinking she's too good. I don't like people that have weak enough four turn cooldown, personally. And then we get into the rare. So I think the barbarians are probably hurting when it comes to the epics, okay? Now we get into like Ogren tribe, and the Ogren tribe have only a few good people. Grimskrin's not viable. Skull Crusher is one of the best characters in the game because he's one of the only three counter attacks, which is why he's good. Shatterbones, uh, I've heard, can be actually okay, um, but I don't have any information on it. I've I heard a couple people tell me they use Shatterbones, but I haven't got any information on where or how. As far as Galcut, he's gonna be used in one of my bomb teams. I actually have him, um, because he places a bomb on everybody. I think that's kind of interesting. Uh, I, I'm saving him for a bomb team. And then Cage Breaker, I just don't think is good at all. Cope Brawler is quite good. Uh, and Clan Boss is a poison dealer if you don't have a, another poison damage dealer. And then Man Eater is an amazing um, attack down as well as uh, gives you kind of the unkillable and block debuff. So he is a very good character all the way around. I've been jealous I don't have one yet. Towering Titan was used in a fusion and only really has uh, decreased defense on basic and the other moves really aren't that important. Okay. So uh, these guys really only have Skull Crush the occult brawler and man either as far as good epics moving on the lizard men here um Jarang is okay he's okay Jarang is actually quite good it's an attack down if you don't have a, a leadership aura in your clan boss and you need an attack down he's actually quite good he also has ally protection continuous healing he's got a lot of stuff building this kit that makes him very good in the clan boss this guy a basculus is interesting because he's forced so he can be used as kind of like a spider tank and he has aoe um, on the basic attack so people that are spider tanks need aoe in the basic attack for life steal then drake's just like not good uh Jizoa is only okay early because you get him for free broadma is pretty trash and then we get into the rares okay moving along the skimwalkers uh, Taurus can only be good with that, that kit that increases his damage as his health gets lower. I've seen screenshots of him doing damage from JRM. And Flesh Terror is okay because he has uh, this move here, which decreases the duration of all enemy buffs by one turn and increases the duration of all enemy debuffs by one turn. So he's kind of a debuff extender in that regard, like a cheap one. Ripper's bad. Rhyme Beast, uh, aka Rain Beast, because everyone's going to be mad at me for pronouncing it that way, is actually very good in early game arena and mid game arena and can help you cheese some of the, some of the PVEs stuff as well. Yaga, I've tried making work in clan boss, and I just don't think his poison's good enough. Steel Skull is a top-tier clan boss character, as well as a defense up, poison on basic, and a cleanse and a heal. Very good. Uh, Basher, I'm just not impressed with, and then we get into the rares. Okay, moving along here, we are on orcs now. Now, Torture Helm's only in a fusion. Zargala is actually pretty good, and uh, originally I thought she was not, but she is. Bloodfeather's a fusion character. Bonekeeper is not good. Shaman's, you know, that the garbage character everyone gets. Terror Beast can actually be used in Fire Knight because he has Reflect Damage, and Reflect Damage on all allies can be used in exchange of uh, counter attack. It will still uh, apply a hit effect and remove a shield, if you didn't know that. So he's not bad. Uh, there and then we have Vrask, who is an amazing healer, and one of uh, my favorite healers of all time, and I think is a very good character early game to carry you through a lot of things. And Seer is overall a great character because of this move here removes all buffs from allies and enemies. Basically, just removes everything on the field, negates it, and then deals damage according to how much you did. And then there's a chance to play sleep. So I think that uh, she's a very good orc epic as well. Okay, so we got five factions left. We're doing pretty good. We're more than halfway through. Moving on to the demon spawn here. Allure is interesting because her basic attack is a triple hit that also decreases the target's turn meter and critical. So if you manually play her, you can use her to essentially infinite loop and cheese out turn meters. I have like three allures for this reason. Excruciator is uh, kind of an assassin, that new character. Um, and it's not really good because it's single target, doesn't do enough damage. Aaron, yes, is just kind of a filler character. Soul Drinker uh, can be interesting on a bomb team because his basic attack decreases the duration of bombs, and then when he dies, he actually places bombs. So he can be interesting. I'm thinking about doing a team with him and Warm Others. Okay, and then we got Nizana as an all-around good character. can help you in Dragon 20. 
Inferno Baroness, I have a whole video covering her about how I used her to defeat Spider 20. She's a good character. Hellgazers, uh, I, I'm not really impressed with Hellgazer. Uh, Paid Maw here, I've been wanting for forever. This is one of the best attack down characters uh, just in the game, period. And uh, all around is a void attack down, so you can use her uh, in any phase of the clan boss, no problem. And then you get the, uh, the rares there with Demon Spawn. So we're now moving on to the undead, my personal favorite faction. Okay, here we go for the epics now for the undead. I think that they have some of the better ones. Now, Gorgorab is a very good arena character as well as uh, it can help you clear through waves of late game dungeons when you have squishy AOE nukers that need to be revived and also benefit from an attack up. Now, Seeker is once again a very good arena character that has a turn meter fill as well as a provoke on basic that also heals and puts defense up for people when they get a critical hit. So he has everything that kind of helps him with the arena. And then also he's good on defense because of the uh, defense aura, but really you want to speed aura. Okay, Catacomb Counselor I think is actually good primarily because of his third move, which is kind of like a mini longbeard move. It teams up with three random allies to attack and they join using their default skill. And typically when this happens from people, um, they deal reduced damage, but this doesn't happen with this character, and it's a four-turn cooldown, I meaning if you have long beard plus this character, uh, you can really nuke through some waves very quickly. So uh, there's going to be a video on this guy later, because I think he's quite good. Dark Atho is just really not that good it currently as the game stands. Husk, I believe it's Stu Gaming has a video out showing that Husk can actually do some work. Uh, Karam, I'm not impressed with. Lich is very tanky, and I've had difficulty with... Uh, an arena team that was just a bunch of liches once. It was weird. Hexia is quite bad. A Defiled Cinder, I think, is quite bad as well. A Corpse Collector, I'm not that big of a fan of. Zelata, I think, uh, can be a decent PvE support type of character. He has a shield for all uh, allies that also does continuous heal, and these are some of the better the better things to happen in PvE, and then also has a chance of placing sleep, etc. So I, I think he's quite good in the dungeons and is known as a staple. I've seen people using Banshee, uh, and one particular video was out there I watched showing that Banshee has some use. I forget where, you would have to YouTube it and find it, but I saw somebody using Banshee to clear Faction Wars. Uh, 21, I think is what it was, but I'm not terrible impressed with this character other than that. Temptress, again, not impressed, although I've seen the Temptress and Seducer together can do some work early game if you don't have much. Uh, Sorceress, not impressed. Oh, wait, now we're getting into the rares. What are we doing here? Okay, moving right, right along, we're on Dark Elves. Okay, Captain Tamalia here. I, uh, I think she is all right because Tamalias are tasty and she also has uh, protection and decrease. Uh, or excuse me, increased defense. So those two combination can make people pretty tanky. So if you have need for that, she might be all right, but I don't think she's super, super amazing. Spider is interesting because of, I think it's this move here, yeah, where he does weaken as well as de uh, decreased defense. However, it's only the 15% weaken. So he's kind of like a, uh, a budget Draco Morph minus the poisons. And then uh, this chick, Lurari, blah, 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 is uh, decent in the dungeons from what I've seen. She's got kind of some debuffs on her basic, but then she attacks all enemies with a chance of freezing, which is very good. And also it, it stops revive, so it's good in the ice golem. And then attacks an enemy, removes all buffs, has an 8% chance of doing block buffs. And this can be all right in some of the dungeons. Uh, if, if you get people like the Horden in the dragon dungeon, for instance, you know, something like that that can get really strong. I'm just trying to think of an example here, but she's the wrong affinity for that. So Crimson Helm is... Uh, is somebody that can be used primarily for this move, which is, oh, actually not that move, excuse me, uh, this move here, the block damage buff on herself. And it lasts for one turn, but this plus the fact that she can revive herself with an increased defense, um, makes it where she can solo a lot of content very early in the game if you don't have options. I've seen people using her to like solo Man Minotaur 15 when they can't quite clear it. So that I did pull her early and I used her for a little while. Um, Warden, I think, is like, okay, early game PvP. Delver, I'm not really impressed with. Lua, I think, is uh, fairly good in dungeons, um, in my opinion. I think she's decent in the dungeons. Silar, uh, JRM, has been telling me that he thinks Silar is quite good and people are sleeping on him. I've seen a couple videos talking about Silar. And Madame, I've had a video talking about her. She is very, very good. I think she's quite good as an epic, one of the best ones. And that's going to wrap up the ep epics for the Dark Elves. Now we're going to go in the Night Revenant. We have a few here. Crypt Witch is only good in like Magic Keep from what I've seen. Pitiless One isn't bad because, uh, what is it? Uh, da, 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 da. I thought they added decreased 
defense to him. I thought in one of the patch notes they said they added a 60% decreased defense to his basic. I'll take it back then. If they had that, then I would say I actually kind of like him. Um, Necron, maybe this is the guy I'm thinking of here. Each hit is a decreased defense. That's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, that's it. So this guy might be like kind of okay if you just need a decreased defense on basic. Um, but other than that, yeah, probably not so hot. Miscreate Monster is very, very good. Uh, all of his moves, I mean, just read this kit. All of these moves are good. Um, I, I think I proved with Solus that uh, AoE shields based upon damage dealt with an AoE move can be ridiculous when, when paired with the correct build. So I think this character is just entirely disgusting. I wish I had one. Sinesha is very good, especially paired with Skull Crown. Everyone knows Sinesha is a good character at this point. Also can be used in Spire 20 Dungeon as a tank. Um, Doom Priest is a good healer, and uh, she's amazingly used because of her passive, which heals when she starts her turn, as well as removes a random debuff from everybody at the start of her turn. So she's good with, like, Relentless Gear, for instance. Deathless, I have no use for. Kythus, I have no use for. Faceless, no use for. Skull Crown's very good. There's plenty of videos out there talking about why she's good. I use her uh, in a number of places. Um, she's good in Arena, Dungeons, etc. Golden Reaper is not bad, except for the fact that this move here can still trigger. Uh, it's currently bug where it can trigger on something, uh, even if it's already cooled down so she can effectively be placing this in the wrong stuff and have nothing done if that was fixed she'd be a lot better uh, and then we get into the rares okay let's but she is still decent compared with people like longbeard don't get me wrong and the last one here is the dwarves and grizzo jaro i think is very good i've said this since the beginning when we saw the kit i think the fact that you can place block debuffs on allies with defense up is very good and he has decrease uh, attack aoe as well i think he's a very good character all the way around and gives uh, a number of good things based upon his kit so I highly recommend them if you pull them. Rear Guard Sergeant, same deal. Uh, gives you a, no, a number of good things. You got decreased defense. You get decreased attack. And then you have ally protection, continuous heal. Kind of a supporting character that applies all the buffs and debuffs that you need. Uh, Rock Breakers interesting everyone thought that this passive here the chance of you know decreasing damage inflicted and mixed with uh increasing the champion's defense when he attacks mixed with the mixed with the counter attack we all thought that that was going to be kind of interesting i've yet to see anybody uh make this character really shine and i'm not sure how i feel about this guy i, I don't really necessarily like him um Maybe early game is like in a campaign farmer or something. I'm not very impressed. And she is interesting because of the way she works with shields, where she does damage like based upon her shield and she ignores defense. She actually seems like a better version of Mountain King, which is kind of weird. So if I pulled her, I would definitely give her a try. If she does a large amount of damage, she might be interesting. And she gives ally attack in all battles. So that's going to cover all the epics. Let me know if this video was helpful for you. I tried to go in a little bit slower as well as give a slightly more detail in this one for you guys since one of the uh, common comments I was seeing on the legendary one is I went a little bit too fast because I was worried you guys didn't want to sit through a long video. So thank you guys very much for watching this. I love you all. Please do subscribe. Uh, we are gaining uh, subscribers uh, every day and uh, it, the, the dream of content creation is more alive than it's ever been and I have you guys to thank for that. So thank you very much for everything you do and I hope to see you on the next video. Bye-bye now.